winter, there are a lot of celebrations, and sometimes it is the perfect time to enjoy one another's company and maybe a glass of wine. Now, there is a type that has a unique tie to our area. I got a chance to learn a little background about this special drink known as ice wine. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Melby here at the Vineyards for Parallel 44, a winery here in Wisconsin that has the perfect weather for a distinct variation of wine. And maybe you've heard about it. It's called ice wine. So we are gonna be learning a little bit more about that right now. I'm bringing in Steve Johnson from Parallel 44. First, for those people who don't know what it is, yes. what is ice wine? It is a very rare wine that's caused by mother nature freezing the grapes such that we concentrate the sugars and acid of each little berry into the consistency of like a maple syrup droplet then fermented very slowly to get one of the most complex flavored wines you could produce. So in, in layman's terms, it's a sweet wine? It is. It has high sugar, but it's pressed such that the ratio of sugar to acid remains the same. So it's not overly sweet, but it is richly flavored, and the, the, the flavors just linger on your palate after you swallow. And am I right that we just happen to be in Wisconsin at the perfect spot to be making ice wine? You can't grow, you can't produce this everywhere. Right, you need a climate such that it's warm enough to ripen grapes, but then cold enough to get down into the teens in December. So rarely in the wine world does it get that cold, especially on the West Coast or in Europe. But in Wisconsin, as we all know, it gets super cold relatively quick in winter. So it's the perfect climate for ice wine. We walked through the rows and rows on site where the grapes for wine grow and talked a little more about ice wine in general. Either you love it or you don't care for it at all because it's a very sweet wine. Uh, but we have people calling in advance waiting for the release of it. So there are certain people who just can't get enough of it. Then Steve took me inside to the tasting room to try it for myself. Ice wine is expensive, about $50 for a half bottle. It comes in these skinny versions of the real thing. Cheers. Cheers. All right, let's try this. So just oh, it is like... sweet. I liked it, and I tried it a few times. It's because everybody described it as so sweet, I was expecting it almost even sweeter than that. That This is nice, this is right. nice. So you kinda wanna just let it linger on your palate. Ice wine is usually made with white grapes. Its alcohol content is about 11%. Flavors of pear and brown sugar. Pear, Yeah. I can smell pear. Yeah. See, I can see that you just sit and enjoy. Yeah, I mean this. some people will pair it with, you know, like apple pie or really super sweet desserts, but for mm -hmm. me it's just like, just letting it linger on your palate is like a dessert in a glass. So, but dessert in a glass, I like that. Yeah. So not it's, bad. So keep that in mind the next time you are out and about ice wine, specific to this area because it's one of the few areas in the entire world that it has the right climate to be grown, to be produced. And Parallel 44, the winery in our area, is just one of those places where you can check it out and try some. Michelle Melby. Fox 11 News. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Melby here at the Vineyards for Parallel 44, a winery here in Wisconsin that has the perfect weather for a distinct variation of wine. And maybe you've heard about it. It's called ice wine. So we are going to be learning a little bit more about that right now. I'm bringing in Steve Johnson from Parallel 44. First, for those people who don't know what it is, yeah. what is ice wine? It is a very rare wine that's caused by mother nature freezing the grapes such that we concentrate the sugars and acid of each little berry into the consistency of like a maple syrup droplet and then fermented very slowly to get one of the most complex flavored wines you could produce. So in, in layman's terms, it's a sweet wine? It is. It has high sugar, but it's pressed such that the ratio of sugar to acid remains the same. So it's not overly sweet, but it is richly flavored, and the, the, the flavors just linger on your palate after you swallow. And am I right that we just happen to be in Wisconsin at the perfect spot to be making ice wine. You can't grow, you can't produce this everywhere. Right, you need a climate such that it's warm enough to ripen grapes, but then cold enough to get down into the teens in December. So rarely in the wine world does it get that cold, especially on the West Coast or in Europe. But in Wisconsin, as we all know, it gets super cold 
relatively quick in winter. So it's the perfect climate for ice wine. So you're never going to get ice wine from like California, from like you said, the East Coast, West Coast, maybe in Canada? British we Columbia occasionally will have it, uh, but it is not an, uh, an every year thing. But here you can guarantee that it'll get cold enough. <laughs> that is true. How often do you guys produce it here? It's sort of an every other year uh, proposition. We could do it every year, but it's a little bit difficult on the vines because they don't get to harden off or get ready for winter when they're hanging on to the clusters of grapes into December. So when do you pick the grapes for ice wine? Usually we want to have several days where it gets to 17 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. And by that point, the water content has frozen as ice crystals and then it is pressed out of the berries. So we're left with kind of like the juice of the grape without much water content. So it's Mother Nature's way of basically concentrating the essence of each of the berries in the cluster. So if you're waiting for that 17 degree temperature mark, that's like into December. Probably, it is, right? and, and there's been many times where we will start the harvest and then all of a sudden we'll get a warm spike after the first day of the harvest and we have to wait for it to get down to 17. So one year we had to finish the harvest in early January with wind chill temperatures of 10 below zero. Oh, how, how fun is it um, picking grapes when it's, it's that cold? It's almost comical. We usually have like children's sleds positioned under the vine. We open the nets and a lot of the grapes will just cascade into the sled and you try to capture them before they get into the snow. But literally you're often standing knee deep in snow, zero degree you know, wind chill temperatures with your fingers trying to capture the grapes. So it's, kind of, it's difficult. Yes, we have a lot of volunteers during the harvest season, but for the ice wine harvest, it's usually just a handful of people, but they love that process too, and it's a great tradition. All right, what do you think of um, you know, the fact that we're able to produce something like that, some, a little specialty wine, so to speak, um, here in our area? I mean, that's really the goal of every wine region, to have something distinctive that other regions can't do. And ice wine is something that we're always gonna be able to excel at. So while it may be difficult and a lot of work, it really does stand out in the wine world as a distinct wine that people crave. This isn't just fruit wine country, that this mm -hmm. is actually authentic wine country, and it's gonna take probably a couple generations for it to happen, but the key components are here. Yeah, what yeah. are the key components? Well, we actually have our own appellation now, mm -hmm. which is the American Viticultural Area, which is the same designation NAP or Sonoma has. So the federal government says you need to have at least uh, certain qualities to your soil, topography, and climate that make that wine distinctive because of its where it's grown. So ours is the Wisconsin Ledge, which is really from top of Door County all the way along the lakeshore to just north of Milwaukee. So to say, you know, 15 years ago, Wisconsin had to have its own official wine appellation. People would have laughed and said, you've been drinking too much beer, see, <laughs> this is not wine country, but it is as official as any other wine region in the nation now. Nice. How long have you been making ice wine here? I think our first vintage was back about 10 years ago. So we don't do it every year because in theory it's hard on the vines because they don't really go into dormancy like they need to when they're hanging on to their clusters. So if you don't pick them until December, they can't really acclimate to the weather like you want to. Plus it's physically demanding to pick grapes when it's that cold. So it's partly for convenience, but partly because I think it's hard on the vines to do it every year. Okay, got it. How, um, how popular is it? It is popular, it is an expensive wine. It's $55 for a half bottle, which is not as much as the Canadian ice wine, which is like $100 for a half bottle. But um, it, I would say either you love it or you don't care for it at all because it's a very sweet wine. Uh, but we have people calling in advance waiting for the release of it. So there are certain people who just can't get enough of it. So how big is this area, right? This is where your main the yeah, so we have eight acres here, and then we have four acres up in just north of Sturgeon Bay, and then I contract with eight growers across the state uh, from Door County down to Port Washington, and then three on the southwest side of the state. So we need about 160 tons of grapes every year to meet the demand of production. Oh. So we, I think we produce more Wisconsin-grown wine than any other winery. Wow. I'm trying to encourage other wineries to like invest in the time of an energy of a vineyard because in the end I think people are more and more wanting to taste what this area can produce. You yes. know like you can go you can go to Festival Foods and get a bottle of Cabernet at a price point that I can't compete with or at a quality that's as high because the wine is best where it's grown. Mm -hmm. So you know like rather than us trying to be like another region I just figured let's just 
do what we do best, and that's going to be white wine, sparkling wine, wine, rosé, iced wine. And if enough of us do this for a long enough period of time, people in other parts of the country will be asking for iced wine from Wisconsin. It's a wine that usually doesn't last that long upon release. We still have enough for maybe a six-month period, uh, but then there will be a period where there won't be iced wine. So okay. knowing that you don't get it every year, I guess it makes it a little bit more special for people. Sure, sure. I could see that. Yeah. And it's the same type of grapes. It's not, it's just that they, you pick them later. Yeah, generally it's a white grape. So the actual ice wine that we pick is generally up on the hill there. It's called the St. Pepin grape. Okay. We'll have to taste them. Have you ever had any? No. Uh, it's very, it is the most richly flavored wine you could ever taste. But generally you want grapes that have thicker skins so that they can endure that freezing thaw cycle. So if they were too thin of skinned grapes, they would just shrivel up into pure raisins. So they have to have some physical integrity to withstand that freeze-thaw cycle. So the, the white varietal called St. Pepin is probably the best one to use for here. Okay. The key to enjoying ice wine is to serve it like between 40 and 45 degrees. Um, some people like to pair it with desserts, but I think it's kind of a dessert in a glass. So it has a little bit thicker consistency but it's uh, extremely aromatic. So I need so, to smell it. So what do you mm. smell? There's no right or wrong answer. I smell sweet grapes. Yeah. I smell sweet grapes. Yeah, so on mm -hmm. our descriptions we say flavors of pear and brown sugar. Pear. Yeah. I can smell pear. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I need to cheers you. Cheers. All right, let's try this. Just oh, it is ring. sweet. But at the end, do you get a little bit of the, the, the tartness, the acidity? A little bit of the tart and that, that brown sugar comes through a little bit. Yep. I feel like I'm such a connoisseur here. But um, it does, you know, I was, ex because everybody described it as so sweet, I was expecting it almost even sweeter than that. That, this is nice. This is right. nice. So you kind of want to just let it linger on your palate. And then as it warms up in your mouth, the, the aromatics kind of reach the back of your palate and it really... You almost kind of like want to pull a little air through your teeth over your tongue and then it kind of like just fills up your whole palate into your nasal cavity and that's where you get that full expression. And when you let it settle there on your tongue, it does, the taste lingers after, a, it that, lingers for a while. And that's because it's just so concentrated. It gets a little geeky chemistry wise, but like a typical grape, when you press it, it's about 21% sugar. When we press this, because we press the water out, it's about 40% sugar. So the fermentation is very difficult. The yeast don't want to replicate when it's, it's like in syrup and it can't do what it wants to do. So it takes like three months to ferment. But if you baby it, make sure that the fermentation stays happy. You know, and, and it's not even higher in alcohol. It's only 11% uh, alcohol. People think like ice wine, like because it's so concentrated, this is gonna be like a high alcohol wine. But this is actually lower in alcohol than most table wines. So what you have to really do is you, you stop the fermentation halfway through the fermentation. So if I let it ferment all the way, that 40% sugar would lead to a wine that's like 30% um, alcohol, which would be way too unpleasant. So we halt the fermentation halfway through so you get just enough alcohol, but then all that residual sugar that didn't ferment that gives you that sweetness. And it does, it lingers on your tongue long enough that you, you can sip it. And in, it's, it's, I could see that you just sit and enjoy. Yeah. I mean, this. some people will pair it with, you know, like apple pie or really super sweet desserts. But for mm -hmm. me, it's just like, just letting it linger on your palate is like a dessert in a glass. So, but. Dessert in a glass. I like that. Yeah. So Not bad. Yeah. So keep that in mind the next time you are out and about ice wine specific to this area because it's one of the few areas in the entire world that it has the right climate uh, to be grown, to be produced. And Parallel 44, the winery in our area, is just one of those places where you can check it out and try some. Michelle Melby, Fox 11 News.